well. If these just aren't uh, epic conditions, I don't know what it is. I am back in Bryce Canyon National Park just for a weekend getaway just for a Friday Saturday and then I'll come back on Sunday I'm here about six weeks earlier than I was last year and the reason I picked this weekend it was kind of a last minute thing it's because I looked at the forecast and saw that there was uh, some snow on the way I've only ever been here in the winter only one other time it was kind of still winter early spring I guess There's still a little bit of snow but with the forecast, it kind of made me excited. Seeing some snowstorms come through, that made me be an interesting weekend to go try to get something unique. So now I just got here, checked in on my, rented a little cabin outside of the park. And now I'm just kind of scouting around, trying to decide how I want to spend my afternoon. I got uh, a few hours before sunset, so it'd be kind of nice to find something to shoot. And if not, then I'll just at least come up with a plan for tomorrow. in a new spot that I haven't explored before. Just before lunch, I was uh, kind of scouting through here and I found something I thought would be pretty strong to set up on. And the cloud cover was just about the right mix. Uh, there was cloud interest, but it wasn't completely overcast. There was a little bit of soft filtered light. So I ran back and got the camera. And of course, by the time I set up and I'm ready to shoot now, all the clouds have moved in, it's completely flat. Seems to happen to me a lot. So I've been watching the sky to see what it's gonna do been checking the clear outside app and uh, cloud coverage predictions from now until sunset are pretty much 100%. So I think I missed my shot, but this is super easy to get to. It's just kind of right off a parking area. So I could easily come back here, but I'm sitting here kind of watching the clouds trying to decide if I want to shoot it anyway, but I wanted to shoot E6, color transparency, film on this. And uh, it's just not going to work with this kind of flat light. So I hate to say, but I think I'm better off just packing it down and waiting to see if I get better conditions later, as opposed to just wasting the film, because this isn't going to turn out very well. Eh, is what it is. So I packed the camera away, and as I was heading back towards the truck, it started to snow. Got some flurries happening right now. Just no surprise. Uh, it was in the forecast and it might do that. Uh, it's for sure supposed to snow tomorrow. It's supposed to get cold too. Anyway, I uh, put all my stuff in the truck and I was sitting here just kind of to, trying to figure out what I want to do next. And uh, when I look at the horizon, there's some blue sky coming out again. So I'm camping out and trying to see what it's going to do here, if it's going to cloud over again or if it's going to open up some more. Because uh, if I get some more light, that composition might actually be good to shoot. So I don't know. The weather down here is just kind of unpredictable this weekend and it's kind of hard to know what to do. Just kind of have to be prepared for anything, stay on your toes, I guess. So the sky did its thing for a while this afternoon, kind of a mix between overcast and flurries. Uh, and then now it's closer to sunset. It's 45 minutes before the sun's all the way down. Uh, and the sky's opened up, so I'm back. So I set up on this exact same composition again. I've just been waiting for the clouds to break up and give me directional side light on these hoodoos up here in this center of this composition. Uh, and I've already exposed two sheets of Kodak E100. And then I've also taken a backup shot on Ektar 100 color negative film as well. So I framed this up with my 105 millimeter Fujinon f5.6 lens. That's the one that gave me uh, image circle issues when I was in southern Utah last year. 
didn't end up selling it. And it's probably good that I didn't because it actually ended up being about the right focal length for this image. Uh, I can't move any further forward because there's a ravine here. I can't really go back and like use a longer focal length either. There's a bunch of trees and brush in my way. So I was kind of pinned in here and it just happened to be about the right focal length. I actually would have preferred it to be maybe a little wider, but I didn't have anything between 90 and 105. So 105 was closer. Now because of the small image circle, I couldn't do a lot of movements with it. And that's okay because I didn't have to. My plane of focus does kind of go at an incline here from my nearest foreground to my furthest background, but I'm looking up at the camera. So the plane of focus naturally already travels with that without having to adjust the standards at all. So no movements. So the E100 shots were F32 and a third, one over four. I was a little worried about the dynamic range because it's late enough in the afternoon now that the, the foreground of my composition is not really getting light. It's just the tips of these hoodoos up here. Uh, so I took that backup shot on Nectar and exposed one stop brighter. So it was one over two, F32 and a thin a third. So just in case the, uh, the shadows go completely black or something goes wrong, or kind of worried about the clouds were pretty bright. The dynamic range might be a little much for E100. I don't know because I've never shot it on something like this. So just in case I got that backup shot. Now I'm sitting on the other Ektar sheet on that same holder. It's loaded up and ready to go and I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens. Just observing. I think I've seen the best of the light so far. The clouds are kind of lighting up pretty colors, but the directional light on the hoodoos is getting more and more towards the very top. Uh, because the sun isn't all the way down yet, but I'm in kind of a canyon area where the sun's behind a bunch of hoodoos on my left over here to the to the west. And it's blocking all the light on the foreground of the composition. So it's a little bit of a challenge to try to time it just right uh, because I was trying to shoot the gap in between two clouds. So I was getting some directional light and I knew I, it, it only had a brief moment in time to get it just right because the clouds were gonna come cover the sun again. So I actually took my meter of just holding the trigger and looking through and just holding the spot on the brightest part of the rock. And I was watching it ratchet up and up and up in brightness and I hit the shutter. So I hope I got it the, the best, as close to the best timing as I could get. Now I'm not sure what to do. I don't think I'm gonna take any more exposures unless something really spectacular happens because all the directional light's fading. To be honest, it was a little bit of a rough day. This is the only exposures I've taken. So I'm glad to have these, at least these down because uh, I was kind of worried I was gonna strike out today. That would have been kind of unfortunate, but. Is what it is, weather conditions, you know, unfortunately I can't yet control the weather. <laughs> I don't have an app for that. So I'm at the mercy of whatever I'm given. And that's just how it went, so. But yeah, that's that's three sheets of film uh, on this one composition. So I'm glad to have at least those in a bag. So now with any luck, they'll turn out. So I really should have used the grad filter on this one. Probably a two stop or three stop. Not sure why it is that I always seem to forget that I have those in my backpack, but that's something I'm working on that I've set as a personal goal for myself is to take more advantage of my grad filters and learn when to use them. This would have been a perfect example because the bright sunlight that's sticking up into the skyline could have benefited from being knocked down from the grad, and it would have enabled me to get a lot better exposure on the foreground here, which is completely underexposed. Now, it's not so bad that I can't recover it. I was able to get some detail out of it, but it's just something I need to work on and take on as a personal improvement project. As far as the composition goes, I like the clouds in the sky on this one better, so I'm probably going to stick with this one. I just like how the whites in the clouds show up on this one. Sharpness is good, looks reasonably sharp everywhere. Just, yeah, need to work on learning how to recognize when I need to pull the grad filters out. And here's a sheet of Ektar that I shot as well. The exposure on it looks like it's pretty dark as well, but looks like it did a little bit better job of capturing all the detail. But here's the final image, and as always, leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Thank you.
Well, the snow moved in, as you can see, and it's beautiful, but it's, it's difficult to work with. <laughs> Tip number one, leave your camera bag all the way zipped up anytime you're not actively getting in and out of it, because otherwise it'll fill it with snow. I learned that lesson the hard way a long time ago with my digital kit, so the film kit. I've been pretty diligent with it. But I found myself a composition just right trail side. Uh, I don't see myself getting adventurous and leaving the trail here because, I mean, everything's a steep cliff, so you're kind of stuck with the trail. But I'm not very far down, uh, and it's just that the snow and the atmosphere really, really helps with background separation. It's just amazing. It looks beautiful. It's a little more than what I was asking for because it's actually almost a whiteout. But the accumulation of snow on the ground is really nice because it makes everything just look fresh and fantastic with a nice blanket of snow on it. So I'm really stoked for that. We'll see how the day goes. But I'm trying to shoot in it right now. I'm trying to take advantage of the conditions and see if I can get some, some you know, interesting stuff that maybe you don't normally see from Bryce. A lot of the stuff you see is usually just the hoodoos with glowing light, usually in like summertime kind of scapes. There's some winter stuff too, but this is something a little different. It's kind of an experiment. We'll see how it goes. But what I've got is the area of the trail side here that's got some hoodoos that kind of like create this little bit of a pattern that kind of curves in here. One little like center focus one in the middle and then two that kind of curve around it. And I thought it made for an interesting subject. So I decided to try to frame up on it with my 150 millimeter Nikon uh, f5.6 lens. The background's just a whiteout, uh, but the snow and the atmosphere really helps. Seeing this in clear conditions, it's just chaos. So uh, the atmosphere is really helping with this and making this shot possible right now. I've exposed two sheets of Kodak E100, color positive transparency film. Uh, this trip is the first time I've shot 4x5 E100. I shot a roll of 120 in Zion last fall, and there's a video I did comparing that to Provia and Belvia, which I'll link to up here. But this is the first time shooting it on the large format camera, so this will be interesting. It was kind of one of my main goals was to shoot this box and try to try it on different subjects. This is kind of perfect, honestly, uh, because there's so much white. It's really easy to meter. So I just picked a patch of white snow and I put that a stop and a third above middle tone. I didn't want to go too bright because I didn't want to get because it's color positive film. I want to make sure I had a little bit of latitude there. So I went a stop and a third. And the two exposures, I took at different apertures. The first one was F32 and two thirds. And then the second shot, I opened up a stop to F22 and two thirds. And the reason for that is because there is blowing snow. And I wanted to try two different shutter speeds to see if one's better than the other for the blowing snow. Uh, I expect it's going to be blurry no matter what. But I wanted to see if I could get a, you know, try to get a little bit of the action with the snow falling too. I had to use a bit of front tilt because my foreground subject is really close in the middle there. And then the edges on the outside are further away. So I had to add some front tilt to keep my plane of focus along all of that. Uh, and then just stopping down quite a bit, I'm hoping will give me enough depth of field that'll keep everything else acceptably sharp. And not everything needs to be pin sharp because of course there's snow and atmosphere everywhere. So I'm willing to make some sacrifices. And that's about it. It's about all there is to this one. It's, it's snowy and it's blustery, but it's, it's awesome. It's awesome conditions. I'm stoked to be here. I'm wearing plenty of warm layers, so I'm happy with that. Just trying to keep all my gear dry. I think it's time to pack this up before my camera gets completely full of snow and uh, wander on down the trail, see what else I can find. Just a real quick safety tip. If you do this, if you come to Bryce and you do these hikes when it's snowing like this, be real careful. I really highly recommend bringing some grab-ons or some spikes because everything's a steep climb to get down and up, you know, from the amphitheater. And there's ice and a lot of slippery slopes. So be really careful as you can get really hurt, especially with these drop-offs, these cliffs. So mind your safety. So I was really happy with the exposure on this one, and I was really pleased with the way E100 handled the color palette, considering I was completely engulfed in a snowstorm while I was exposing. But I think it handled the scene really well. I think I like this exposure a little more, just because down here in the corner, uh, there's a little bit more blowing snow flurries. I'm not sure which shutter speed that is, but I kind of like that in this photo. So this other one doesn't seem to have that quite as strong. It also looks like it's got a development mark up here on the top right corner. It isn't too bad in this case, I could recover if I needed to, but I'm kind of glad to have a second exposure so I don't have to. It's also a good example of why I shoot doubles on this stuff. Yeah, film's expensive and that racks up pretty fast, but I just like having the insurance policy, you know, and against things that are completely out of my control. Sharpness is good. I focused on this foreground piece right here and trying to get my plane to focus to extend all the way up to the top of these hoodoos in the background. 
I think that was successful. The only thing I'm a little shaky on is composition. I was trying to get this one chunk in the middle and then get these two pieces, you know, the hoodoos kind of surrounding in a circle kind of kind of pattern. But after looking at it, I kind of wish I would have changed the framing just a little bit because this looks a little kind of uneven and unbalanced up here on the top left. But I still like the photo. I think it turned out pretty well. I'm just a little shaky on composition. Not sure how I feel about it. But here's the final image and let me know down in the comments what you think. I just want to say thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, you can let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down below. And if you want to see more videos from me, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. Feel free to leave me comments as always. I enjoy reading them all. Take care of yourself and I'll catch you in the next video. Cold. Jesus.